Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon again, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We're going again to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do, I'm going to prep you for the stupid we're about to go through. Because I pre-read a little bit. What we are about to go over next is what I like to call shock and awe tactics. Dr. Matthew Israel obviously uses this, but there's other well-known orgs who use the same shit. What we're about to be barraged with next month. I already have a fucking headache happening right now because I'm just anticipating the special level of hatred and stupid that's going to be thrown in the autistic community's general direction. He's going to talk about us swallowing razor blades, right? Cut our skin, gouge our eyes out. His usual bullshit. They're homicidal, they're crazy! You mean as opposed to a dude who sits there and tries to shock us into neurotypicality? That kind, doctor. That kind. Why do people like Autism Speaks and Dr. Matthew Israel do this shit? Because they want to shock you into thinking that we have to be tortured. Much like an abused parent will insist they have to hit their child. Because if they don't, we'll never be under control. I've got your control, first of all. Second of all, they like to use these extreme manners. And they do it out of context. Dr. Matthew Israel is using shock and awe inappropriately here. Now, get more into a breakdown of it, but to make it brief. He's taking a concept of meltdowns and then throwing things into it that have nothing to do with it. Swallowing razor blades, which is actually not common when we're talking about pica. Usually it's coins, marbles. I've heard cases of kids eating glass, yes. True, I'm not saying that doesn't happen. But it's not the meltdown shit that the doctor is trying to insist that it is. The majority of what he talks about, what he calls dangerous behaviors, are induced by meltdowns. He then throws these little add-ons here as a part of it, when it's not. With autism, there's more than one issue. One of the biggest that we face outside of the emotional ones would be the sensory. Each of us have varying levels of difficulty with sensory issues. Sometimes those sensory issues can be so severe that it can provoke dangerous behavior if reasonable, logical problem solving does not, you know, lead one to put in reasonable accommodations, coping mechanisms and assistive devices to help in these situations. Why is this out of context? It's a bad behavior, Tiffany. Shouldn't it be wiped away from you? Again, let me invite you to stop living in magical la-la land. Okay? The issues that come from our neurology don't magically go away from behavior conditioning. Okay? Once again, Karen, that's not how any of this works. Okay? You can't just wish, will, or brainwash sensory issues to go away. Not how literally any of this works. How does this work in the real world? I know I'm going on a little bit of a rant. Please excuse me. How it actually works is what is the problem? What is the problem that's inducing the problem? The root issue. What is causing this extreme reaction? 
Okay, we need to put something in the place here to stop this. All right, I'm going to try to cut it, make it brief, and not rant too much. I'm running on very low battery here. Actually, hold on. I'm going to go grab my cord. Please excuse the pajama pants. I regret nothing. Uh, cords, cords, cords. This is what you get when you front load like a crazy person. Uh, oh, wrong cord. Oh, crap. Technical difficulties, folks. Technical difficulties. about new phone is uh, phone, new phone plug and computer plug look exactly the same. Ugh. All right, let me get this plugged up here and we'll get to it. I do not have an edit button. I know I say it all the time, but it doesn't make it less true. There we go. Where were we? Ah, uh, yes. Basically what he's doing here is taking issues, pulling them out of context, and then trying to throw it together to scare you. Okay? It's taking behaviors that are induced by sensory issues and throwing it in with meltdowns and aggression. And then coming up with this idea that it's all a form of aggression and we must punish it. Nah. All right, we're going to go through the disclaimers and then we're going to break it down for you, all right? In the description box, you're going to find a link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read. It's written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by autistics for autistics wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called behavior modification program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much, they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused, so you know that thrill. Please read that article and share it on all your social media. We also have linked in their Neuroclastics public statement in regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding folks in case those bastards have the balls to see through with their threat. We also got the link to the Ozarks first article in regards to the Agape slash Stone for Help boarding school situation. This is a so-called Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri, that has and pending over 21 civil lawsuits, claims, and allegations leveled against it, all which have been substantiated by the hard evidence gathered by the Missouri Department of Social Services during its investigation, and includes the following. Sodomy, rape, sexual assault, child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, child trafficking, starvation, and that's just for starters, folks. You have one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another, a doctor, still on the premises with full access of the boys up on multiple, again, substantiated claims of sodomy, rape, and sexual assault of the boys there. You have an attorney general too busy trying to chase after drag queens to protect kids from the real pedophiles out here, and you got a governor off his fucking nuts, so... Please read that article and share on all of your social media. You got the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign as well, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, Jennifer Masumba's behavioral sheet of shockable offenses, a clip out of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins back in 2002, the templates in the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. 
When we discuss the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones, all right? This channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity and we speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they are watching this, very obviously, parental supervision is advised, all right? All right, so let's get into it. Such examples of this type of behavior are these. Swallowing razor blades. Attempting to cut one's skin with a knife under conditions where the skin is too scarred to be able to be surtered due to repeated occurrences of the behavior. Stabbing or suffocating others or otherwise engaging in a homicidal action. Jumping out of a moving vehicle and setting fire to a house. Let's, let's break these down because he's going to sit here and lie to you and excuse his abuse. Shall we? Let's start with number one. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a thing in autism that's called pica. One of those co-occurring conditions. This is not something that every autistic has, but some of us do. Pica is something where we will put something inappropriate in our mouths. Obviously, there are reasons why this can be deemed dangerous. With me, it was always pennies. I wanted copper. Something about the coolness of the metal and the taste would calm my happy ass the fuck down. Okay? Not everyone has it, but some of us do. As to why in particular are swallowing razor blades, there's one of two ways this can go here, folks. Let's start with pica, which can be dangerous. Yes, one of my consumers, when I work for the state, would eat glass. Okay? I'm not going to sit here and bullshit you and tell you these dangerous situations don't exist because they do. Let me tell you how a reasonable form of treatment is done so that they we don't end up hurting or killing ourselves due to this particular condition. And then I'll go into what another more depressing reason as to why that's occurring. So if it is pica, again, this is part of our neurology, folks. We do not control this. I cannot say what works for everyone. I will say what works for me. Although I was diagnosed late, yes, it's true. There was always an idea that something was going on here, right? My mom's a smart individual. Been around healthcare for many, many years. Did she throw me into the JRC? Because I could swallow a copper and maybe possibly die of, like, metal poisoning or some shit? No. She's a logical woman. I, I had to get it from somewhere. Mom, dad, both extremely logical people. The concept of, well, what else could be cooling, like, the metal and kind of have a little bit of that metallic taste that could replace... The possibly dangerous copper. Ice cubes. So kind of the usual. They took one thing and instead of trying to, you know, demonize me for the fucking behavior. A reason the accom accommodation, a healthy, non-life-threatening alternative was provided for me. Guess what, perks? It worked. I no longer feel the urge to stick pennies in my mouth. If that particular urge comes up, that's what an ice cube tray is for. It's amazing what logic and accepting reality can do, isn't it? Now, for number one, what's the other thing that could possibly induce such behavior? Depression, folks. This is the dark side of having my diagnosis. We know from day one before we're even diagnosed that we are in a world not built for us. Where people can basically experiment on us, bully us, B 
beat us, kill us, rape us, torture us, all kinds of shit with no repercussion. If we ever say anything, we're be we're made to be out to be uncontrollable fucking monsters, folks. When we dare stand up for ourselves, we get shouted out by autism mommy TM. We get burnt out or psychologically damaged. A good majority of us have gone through some form of fucked up abuse. What do we do in depression, neurotypicals? Yeah. You think we might become suicidal? That level of fucking constant hatred that gets thrown at us every single fucking day. We have grown ass adults when we're fucking teenagers coming up and saying that we shouldn't fucking exist. You think that maybe... Maybe that might induce, over a period of time, some suicidal behavior. Because, yeah, it does. It really does. So, how do we deal with that situation if it's just actual traditional depression and desperation? Same thing you do with anything else. Address the elephant in the room. The actual root problem. And you go from there. Let's go to number two. Attempt to cut one's skin with a knife under conditions where the skin is too scarred to be able to be sutured due to repeated occurrences of the behavior. Now, why would we cut ourselves? Ah, this is a twofold thing, because not everyone with autism cuts themselves, but there are those with autism that do. You have neurotypicals who do for the same reason. One of the biggest areas I noticed in my work where this was occurring were individuals who have suffered at some point in their lives abuse. I don't know about other autistics, but I tend to carp compartmentalize and store all my trauma into a small spot in the back of my head so that I'm able to function. Every so often that door gets so packed in that eventually it bursts open. Yeah. Think about it. There's a psychology to cutters. If you ever talk to one of them. It's a form of pain release. It's a way of causing the pain in a physical manner that psychologically will process. It's it's almost a way of releasing emotions while they're releasing blood. And by the way, that's true for the autistics who do it as well as the neurotypicals who do it. Okay? If you are in that situation, the worst fucking thing you can do on the goddamn planet is try to trigger that behavior, particularly when that person's autistic and we're prone to fucking meltdowns. The last thing you want to fucking do is try to induce that behavior when we're in meltdown because our asses are at our animalistic strongest at that point. I mean, I guess if you really want us to kill ourselves, then you'll do it, I guess. By the way, any intelligent person is not going to induce an autistic into meltdown while they have a fucking knife in their hand. Unless you, you like the idea of murder. Okay? Not the smartest thing to give us a lethal weapon and meltdown, right, Paul? Yep. Okay. Autistic people cut a lot of them for the same reason that you have some neurotypicals who do. Then there's the other situation. This is why I keep bringing up sensory. 
I think back to the individual there, they talked about how he scratched off his skin. Sensory issues can be that bad, folks. Okay? It can literally be, I'm trying to get my skin off my body so I can stop feeling this sensory because it's causing me immense physical fucking pain. So much pain that actually cutting off my skin seems like a better idea than continuing to allow this feeling to go on. Yeah, there's that. Now let's move on to their next bullshit, shall we? Stabbing or suffocating others or otherwise engaging in homicidal action. Why would an autistic engage in homicidal fucking behavior? Gee, let me fucking think, Karen. Many of us, in fact, I have yet to speak to a single autistic who hasn't had some form of fucking abuse perpetrated upon us. I do mean everyone, without fucking exception, I have met. A person can only take getting punched in the face so many times before they eventually get up and grab you by the throat. It's the same concept here, folks. Eventually, we're going to get angry. Eventually, we may even retaliate. But guess who gets punished? Is it the bully who pushed us? Or is it us? Because it's us, folks. It's us every fucking time. Okay? We deal with an immense, insane amount of bullying from the time we are in grade school until you can be pushing 40 and people are still trying the same shit. Okay? That would provoke the homicidal side out of anybody. Anybody. Hear me on that. But why would you stab or suffocate others? When did you have those? You bet your fucking ass I had them. I went through hell. And if by doing those things, I could stop the suffering, stop being beaten, you better bet your fucking ass I would do it. Okay? But people will use that and say, see, they're out of control monsters. I'm only the monster. Y'all turned me into being. Look upon your fucking work. Sorry, not sorry. You know how many of us are murdered? Young kids. Beaten to death. And you wonder... Why we might want to stab or suffocate or otherwise have homicidal actions? Think on it. It's not that hard to figure out, is it? And any neurotypical want to sit there and tell me, but that's not normal? Try it sometime. All right. But Tiffany, how did you stop? engaging and wanting to do these things. I haven't, Karen. That's the secret. Secret is, I haven't. I just let my logical brain rule my emotions. I do what logic tells me. Not the emotion in the back of my head that says, rip your eyes out and then shove them down your throat. Okay? Okay. Live in reality, folks. We're not uncontrollable monsters. We are not sociopaths. We are individuals who snap. And why are we snapping? And why do we continue to not address the violence being perpetrated on the entirety of the disability community and suddenly you shocked when we finally react? It's one of those societal world issues 
not just an autism issue. Okay. They like to use this as a means to, this is why we have to do this. It's another episode of nobody wants to address the fucking elephant in the room. Another episode of nobody wants to deal with the root issue. Because God forbid, then neurotypicals might have to change. All right, let's move on to the next one. Jumping out of a moving vehicle. Okay, he mentions this in particular, and I'm glad he brought it up. Because why would they ever jump out of a moving vehicle taking them to the JRC? Why would they want to escape that wonderful bad acid trip piece of fucking hell on earth? Gee. Shouldn't we stop that behavior? You want to stop us from running away from our abusers, really? Sometimes y'all need to fucking think. Setting fire to a house. Again, do we have extreme behaviors? Yes. How do we deal with these extreme behaviors? Do we send us off to a school to get tortured and psychologically traumatized for the rest of our lives? Or do we finally deal with the fucking issues? These behaviors, I've told you all, they do not come out of nowhere. There are reasons. There are triggers over which once tripped, we do not have control. Deal with the fucking triggers. It's not rocket science. It's basic logic 101. The goal of the behavior rehearsal procedure is to make even the beginning phases of the behavior generate conditioned adversive stimulation, which the student will then act to avoid in the future. That's what you don't understand, doctor. Here's this... They have this idea, right, that we can just snap ourselves out of it. And that's a prevalent fallacy that can be found throughout the entirety of the medical model. This is a bunch of learned individuals who yet still refuse to live in reality. But if we conditioned you to act another way, would you do it automatically? Let me address this. Normally, yes. If I'm used to doing a certain way of things, yes. When I'm in meltdown, no. Because the logical brain is not there anymore. Not, not, nobody the fuck is home. Okay? This is what I mean when I say no amount of conditioning or brainwashing is ever going to make the meltdown go away. It is also never going to stop a meltdown. Once we are in it, we are in it, folks. But when we see the beginnings that we can stop it, we just teach you how. Honey, we know how. We're not stupid. We know how. Okay? That's why we're not melting down nearly as much as the media wants you to think that we are. A good majority of the time. The right reasonable accommodations and things in place, we can stop them. But there are times when we cannot. And that's what he uses this bullshit for. But, but, but we taught you... That, that means it will not automatically happen and the meltdown won't happen. It's la la land. That's that fantastical thinking that if we just wish hard enough. No, Karen. When I am melt in meltdown, there's no turning back the fucking clock. It's over at that point. All we can do, us and the people around us, is write it out. All right? You can't condition me to act a certain way and that be able to stop the meltdown. It's not how any of this works. Again, not, not, 
Nobody the fuck is home. Please stop. Stop lying to people. Stop selling them bullshit. Okay? No amount of conditioning is going to magically make me neurotypical or magically make me be able to, by my own willpower, stop meltdowns. There is no willpower when the meltdown hits. Understand this. It is primal animal brain. Okay? There is no logic. There is no arguing me out of it. Get. Fuck God. Okay. You cannot condish. Basically, it's like he's trying to program us. By using behavioral conditioning and torture, he's trying to condition us to act in a certain manner when the triggers hit. Sounds on the surface like it would work. But when you are with a diagnosis like mine, what you have to fucking understand that there is a point where even muscle memory does not fucking function. That is meltdown. I cannot be conditioned to stop something when I'm already in the process of it. I will give him his due on some of this. There is a certain amount that you can do. You can know the signs of your meltdown. True. But doctor, I did not need to be tortured or abused or used as a fucking experiment in order for me to be able to know the signs. What you should be doing as a doctor is not torturing these kids and inducing that behavior because then I can teach it is wrong. We know it's wrong. Okay? We do not like the meltdown side of our diagnosis. Bar none, I have never heard a single autistic say such stupid shit. Okay? As a doctor, what you could be doing is to teach the patient what those signs are providing oh my god reasonable accommodations coping mechanisms and assistive technology for when that when that arises so that their adult ass would know okay all signs means I am getting ready for meltdown. Here's what I need to do. Because that's what I do, doctor. That's what I do. But even with all of that, and my vast knowledge on the subject, it does not go into play once it starts happening. There's no pre-program, no accommodation, nothing I have done with myself. That's going to stop anything once it's begun. Not even the early stages, doctor. Preventative, yes. But even early stages of meltdown, I'm already there, Karen. I'm already there. I'm full animal brain and nothing you do is going to stop what's happening. This is why I say we got to live in reality. This is why I say it's important that doctors realize we're not fucking stupid. As my doctor did. And start teaching me what those signs look like. And what I can do when I see or feel these occurring within myself. To try, if possible... Not to bring myself out of a meltdown because it's fucking impossible. 
but how to minimize things around me to the point that maybe I can avoid one. This is how, in fact, I have brought those meltdowns down to a minimum. And we're going to go ahead and close on that. We don't get very many views on the... Oh, no, hold on. We're not finished yet. For students with whom this procedure has been used, the procedure has proven very effective. Lie, doctor. You do that a lot. Inducing a meltdown on fucking purpose. And then, but, but if you use these while you're in meltdown, again, we're not dealing with reality. And by the way, doctor, you use, use that word a lot. But it's bullshit, folks. Now I'll close out. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time. As always, we here at Spilling Tea do hope you can have a good one. I will see you all tomorrow.